Okay, I've just put my new Han Solo which arrived today. Uh, this one here. Oh, it doesn't get the camera doesn't pick up the laser light. Oh, it's because I'm shining it the wrong way. Okay, so there's the Han Solo with the small head. You can see the small head there. And there's the name tag. This is on a 12 back card, Kenner US. And next to it is a Luke Skywalker on an Empire Strikes Back 41 back with brown hair. So you've got two figure variations here. You've got the Luke Skywalker with the rarer brown hair. You can see how brown that hair is. And then you've got the Han Solo with the small head. So and then you've got this is a US card here and then the Luke is a um, Canadian card so it's got the two languages at the top there it's got English and then French then it's got the Empire Strikes Back logo the name tag Luke Skywalker classic Luke picture there same picture you get on the 12 back or 20 back cards and the Kenner logo there notice there's no um, long play thing there so the long play thing is there and They've removed it by Empire Strikes, but well, they moved it by the early 20 backs. Only 20 back A's have that long play, long play thing there. It's got the address, the Toronto address there for Kenna, Canada, and then we're made in Hong Kong and in English and French. So this is the Luke with brown hair, which is a classic figure, one of the original 12. This is a variation with the brown hair, and then we've got Han Solo. It came today with the small head. I've got loads of Hans with the big head, this, but this is the first carded um, 12 back small head Han I've ever had, apart from the original one I had back in the 70s. And you know, both are really nice items. And when you're going to see this, these two variations put together, I mean, big, big, big Uber collectors will have these figures and they can do it. Uh, but, you know, these have come, this one's come from Canada and this one's come from the US, so, and they're both sweet variations, the brown haired Luke, nice, really dark, chocolatey brown, and then the small headed pinhead Han Solo, so, both these variations are well documented, and you can find out about them in the John Kellerman book I've been talking about. Plus, uh, if you live in America, you should be able to get Lee's uh, Action Figure News, and that will have price variations for the brown haired and the small headed Han. And of the two, the brown haired version, Luke, is uh, pretty scarce on most cards. The pin headed Han is supposedly more common on the 12 back than the big headed Han and but after that this is a hard figure to get and costs way more than this figure a lot more so but two street variations put together the Han and the Luke I mean this is pleasing to the eyes you know, we've got two really sweet looking figures there. We've got the Han and the original 12 back C card, the white price sticker there, and the logo, name tag, excellent figure. Han Solo, small head, and classic picture. And then we move on to the Luke with the really nice dark brown hair both of these are AFA 80 and the push down lightsaber classic image there if you're a modern collector and you want to get these two car backs you can get them on the VOTC and you can get that, that pitch card back on the 
So the Star Wars US Kenner card and that Han on the Star Wars Kenner card on the VOTC has both from Hasbro 2004. And as I've said, they're they're beginning to get really pricey these days. I don't know if they'll re-release these card backs for the vintage collection. They should do. I don't see why they don't. I don't see why they don't make foreign cards as well. Because everyone in other countries would love to get their own card back like uh, Palatoy, Meccano and all that sort of stuff or even just, they just did the Trilogo cards from 83-84 they look pretty cool so there's your Han Sweet Item and the Luke with the brown hair on a Canadian card lots of good Canadian on eBay at the moment check it out especially if you live in the States you've got a couple of transition figures and a few Empire Strikes Back Canadian cards so if you've got a few dollars, check them out. If you go on eBay and you want to know how much this sort of figure goes for, just type in small Han small head and you'll get a few an idea of how how expensive this figure is. And then the Luke, you just put you could just type in uh, Luke's uh, Luke Skywalker vintage carded and that should come up issue that should come up. But then you're getting gonna get a lot of um the twenty ten figures as well. So I mean you could put type in AFA as well. Okay. So really nice items there. And uh sweetness and light. <laughs> I just like looking at this man. Look, this is a lot of money here. Trust me, a lot of money. A sweet Luke, twelve back, well, brown haired variant, and a sweet Han Solo with a small head variant. So both got both of these this year, and you know. I've always wanted the brown haired Luke and I've always wanted the small headed Han. Han was the first figure I ever had as well. With the small head. So I could just watch these all day. <laughs> I think that's how I make my YouTube videos, I just film the stuff and Babylon or and all that sort of stuff. So I think maybe I'm more of a niche type video maker, I make it for the sort of Star Wars, fantasy someone who just likes to look at the figures and savour the beauty of the card and the, you know, the encased figure behind the bubble in, encased in a AFA case. I mean, I really like looking at this. I'm a very visual person as well, so that's, that's the way I am. Okay, time to switch this camera off and time to say toodle pip and Hope you enjoyed this. I'm sure I I will enjoy it when I watch it. <laughs> anyway, cheers. Bye. And is completely at home on the set. He was still awed by his experience in Star Wars. Well, it made me quite nervous at first when I when I began to think about it, that I would be appearing in scenes with Alec Guinness. But uh, he's so charming and workmanlike that it's really, it's proved to be no problem at all. Star Wars introduces such colorful characters as 3PO, R2-D2, Chewbacca, Red Leader, General Tag, and many more. It also introduces three actors with a star-crossed destiny of international stardom, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, and Harrison Ford. I would like very much just to hang up my hammer. That's uh, a minute to hang up my hammer. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't all, at all mind the the opportunity to work more and to have a greater choice in what I did do. Like Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, and Stan Laurel, Al Guinness is the most studied comedic actor of our time. For these are the innovators, unique talent that comes along once in a lifetime. Unlike Chaplin, Keaton, and Laurel, who worked from a single character, Alec Guinness is a many-faceted actor who can develop serious as well as comedic characters. He is the ultimate actor. In his latest motion picture, Star Wars, he brings yet another character to the screen, Ben Obi-Wan Kenobi.
It's a sort of um, a cross, I mean, a sort of wise man, some warrior in outer space at some time or other who's been on the run and then hiding in the desert from his enemies, but has a lot of knowledge about life and about space, presumably, a kind of sort of mystical character in a way, who's raked into the story to assist the young people. I think he's meant to suggest a kind of jump ahead in his imagination or in his awareness of what's going to happen. Alec Guinness also found the working environment of Star Wars highly motivating. We did um, location work in Tunisia in the, on the edge of the Sahara on some of these extraordinary salt flats which stretch for 100 miles. Well, they virtually, I mean, you know, if you've gone to the Sahara, it stretches for 3,000 miles. And there's a great feeling of strange, flat space. Um, but it's genuine space. It's real and gritty. And also shots in canyons in the sandstone hills, which are very dramatic to look at. But you feel it, it's real. It's not, um, it's not some made-up world. It was George Lucas's name on the Star Wars script that tempted Guinness's consideration. I was in Hollywood making a movie called Murder by Death, uh, with David Niven and Peter Sellers and various friends of mine. And on my second from last day, a script arrived on my dressing table, uh, and I saw it was going to be directed by George Lucas. Now, George Lucas I knew about because of American graffiti, which I admired very much. And so I was immediately excited. When I opened it and I saw science fiction, I thought, oh, Lord, I've never done a science fiction. I've seen one or two and quite enjoyed them, but always thought they were a bit cardboard in, from an actor's point of view. But because of Lucas, I started reading it, and then I found myself involved. There was an excitement in the script. I mean, I wanted to turn each page to know what happened next. I mean, very much so. I wanted to know the storyline, but I also wanted to know each uh, little incident, how it was concluded. I, I found a, a, a carrying forward. I mean, like reading a, a novel, which you don't want to put down. American Graffiti was drawn from George Lucas's youth, teenage cruising in his hometown, Modesto, California. Star Wars is Lucas's youthful affair with comic book heroes, a fantasy revisited. The ultimate actor discusses the ultimate writer-director. It, it all stems from George Lucas's imagination, and I have a great admiration for him. Somehow, a kind of taste that he has. His eye is a very true, pure eye, and I, I trust that, and I trust his little things. I've heard him hesitate over saying yes or no, over a look in the someone's eye or something he hears, he, he can't yet say, do it.